So <clears throat> we're back on land for for a couple of weeks. Um, and I'm here at my folks' place, my mother's place now. And I'm sorting out all of these rusty things and <coughs> collecting them and everything just seems to to rust. It is amazing. And there's so many metal here that we could maybe got some money, but everything is just so rusted. Not even sure we will get a penny for this. But while I'm looking at all these rusty things here, just check this out. Everything is just rusting. I was thinking about the rust on Sisu. And while we were, are now away, um, I think Sisu is busy, all the stainless steel is rusting as well. So it made me wonder what was the cause of all this rust? How does rust happen? And how can we prevent rust? So let's talk about that. We came to South Africa, my father passed away and I had to come and <laughs> try to figure out all the stuff here and help my mom set up so that she can, can stay here. This was the spot where we made our, some of our earlier videos. So we were sitting right over there or there, depends on, on where the sun is and how the sun is going to set. And it's a pretty magnific magnificent view. It made me wonder why things rust. Um, and on a boat, it was easily explained to me to say it rusts because we um, is at sea and the sea or salt water is very corrosive. So what is it that makes things rust here? We are we are 300 miles from the closest ocean or sea body of, well, we only have two oceans, the Indian Ocean and Atlantic Ocean here in South Africa. And we are pretty far from the closest point of the ocean. So I don't think we have any sea water or sea water air over here. And also we are like something like 1,500 meters up. So the altitude is pretty high here we, where I'm sitting now. Um, so what is it that caused this rust issue here at my parents' place? I was curious about this rusting thing. Um, it was windmills or water pumps. <laughs> these wind turbines that's pumping the water, they stand there for ages and don't rust. Also, look at the Titanic. If you look at the Titanic, it's already there for a long time in the sea water and still in a very good condition. All the railings looks good. And uh, I also dived on the Tisseldrom at one point. And over there, we also saw that the jeeps is still good there, the tires is good, the ship is in a very amazing condition. And what is it that you only have certain conditions and then rust will start happening? It's, it's intriguing. I mean, if we, if we look at like a wind pump, we call it a wind pump in South Africa, this thing that's turning like this. They stand in our Karua, very vast, not like a desert, but very little rain is falling in the Karua. And those windmills are standing there, water wind pumps or whatever. They stand there for millenniums already, maybe hundreds of years. And they're not rusting. Granted, it was galvanized and it's also galvanized in the old days when they galvanized things properly. 
Um, but still, the little screws and the fittings and even the gears, they're not galvanized. They are pretty much just iron. And yes, there is signs of rust, but they're still working and it's not like what's happening here. So let's look at, at ships in the ocean. And there's a ship found 2,600 years old in the Black Sea. And it still looks pretty damn good. And what about the Titanic? The Titanic is also another boat that's, what, already more than 100 years, I think, already in the ocean. Pretty deep as well, and that's just salt water. Why is it not rusting as fast as, for example, ships that's on the coast? Um, shipwrecks that is wrecked on a coast, like these ones. I mean, they, some of them is not even 20 years old and they're already looking like they thousands of years in the weather. Uh, so what is the thing? You can submerge metal iron into the sea and it will still be good. Or you can keep iron out in a Karoo or desert and it will stay there forever. Not forever, but you know where I get my drift. What is it then that makes it rust? So I turned myself to <coughs> Wikipedia. And it is a layman's terms of why rust happens. So there's actually quite a lot of things in Wikipedia. And basically it says over here, so reddish brown oxide formed by the reaction of iron and oxygen in the catalytic, catalytic presence of water or air moisture. And it consists of, and this is now this big words, hydrous iron oxides and iron oxide hydro, hydroxide. Hmm. This long formulas. It is like crazy. But that doesn't tell me anything. So I'm digging deeper. Let's go down this rabbit hole. Let's start with the basic thing about an atom. You get a center, a nucleus, which is also containing protons and neutrons. And then around this nucleus is basically electrons spinning around. Now the basic, basic, basic one is the element hydrogen and it's just one nucleus with one protein, one neutron and then one electron spinning around. That is hydrogen. It's also in water, H2O, hydrogen is H and it's two of them with an oxygen. So that's a basic thing. Keep in mind hydrogen because we're going to use it in water and we're going to use it in oxygen and also in the whole rusting process. So let's look at iron. These rusty iron thingies. So how many electrons are there in the valence cell? Which means it's the outer, outer one. Um, or in other words, electrons that iron will give off readily um, or accept readily. So iron has two valence electrons in the outer shell. And there's a lot of other ones and I spin all sorts of different ways, but for simplicity, they just say on our outer shell, there's two electrons and that shell is collectively can take 32 electrons. So it's easier to, to lose the two than to gather 30 others. So for them, for, for iron to actually go and try and steal from others 30 electrons, a little bit of a tough job, but it's easier for it to say, right, let's take those two and we, we give it away. We can sacrifice it or we can just give it to other, other elements. Oxygen on the other side has only two shells to start with, but on the outer shell, there's supposed to be eight and there's only six. So there's space for two. 
electrons to just just come in and again the same as with iron just the opposite now if we have six electrons to give six away it's going to take a lot of energy but for oxygen to actually accept two electrons is actually much more easier now guess who has two electrons this is a nice piece of rusty iron and we're going to say for for example water is falling on here then the two electrons or two the the iron will give up the, those two electrons which they normally the iron will give away the two electrons to make ferrous ions and then these two electrons just run uh, flow through the iron to outside just just outside the droplet where it's going to take two water molecules h2o two water molecules and one oxygen o2 molecule and then they will form high, four hydroxide ions this hydroxide ions will go back to the ferrous ions and then it will bind again with them so now it's almost like a full circle binds with them and they will form ferrous hydroxide and this is very close to rust already the ferrous hydroxide then reacts with the oxygen again more oxygen and then it will make the rust to form ferric hydroxide and that is rust now what does this have to do with stainless steel on a boat? <laughs> because stainless steel, and if we think of 316, stainless steel 316, which everyone wants to have 316, it's only 16% chromium. 16% chromium. The rest is iron. And, and, and there's also like 2 to 3% of other thing, and then also 1, 2, 3, 1. One something up to one percent of phosphor and silicon and stuff like that. So it is only sixteen percent chromium, and the rest, and the three or whatever percent odd percent the other stuff, the rest is iron. So how does that affect us then, as 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 yatis? Let's go back to Sisu, and let's see what's going on there at Sisu. There. <laughs> the rust problem. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm doing something wrong, but it is just rusting everywhere. So I've treated this before, and it, the rust just keep on coming back. You see, the rust is there. The rust is even here. And look at this. This is the source. It's below this thing here. I don't know. I need to take this off and then treat the rust at the bottom of this this one i've just opened and de-rusted again so i took this thing off took all the rust off took all the rust off here also along the road and also here so now you can see there's no more rust here but it is a bloody pain to get these four screws loose because it's somewhere under here Okay, let's see what's... Yep. Oh, yuck. So, then it's cleaned. And I'm now waiting it to dry out completely, because I washed it as well. I put all the screws in this mixture of um, acrylic acid and uh, soap 
to try and remove the, dra the, the rust that way and I also put the plates in here so um, it, should, it should start removing the rust hopefully so let's see how that works And you can see this one, the metal was polished before, but all the back sides are not polished. So you must make sure that all the rust is removed and it's a pain. And then of course all the, the little bolts as well need to be polished and rust removed. They are easy, they are not rusted. So it's just these buggers here. On this side you can already see how much pitting has happened there already. Okay. It's now been polished, so I only need now to to apply the rust block. Is to remove all of the rust from the doors. This is a little bit more difficult because by polishing and waxing it is a lot of work. The next step is to lanagard every single component and even the little screws. Here is rust. There is rust everywhere. This one doesn't look too bad, but you can see there's also rust over there. So we need to fix that too. And like here. Um, we need to get to that rust over there, inside. Look at this one here. 